guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is mobile shabane and this is nuggets for your wallet a place where we share pockets of tips and wisdom on personal finance we're still in august and i would like to say happy women's month to all the ladies watching this video in south africa the month of august is dedicated to celebrate the women of this country on the 9th of August each year, it is a public holiday in South Africa, uh, which is a day that really reflects on the good work and the contribution that women has made in fight for freedom and in ensuring that we as a country enjoy the democracy that we enjoy. On the 9th of August in 1956, about 20,000 women marched to the Union Building to protest against the apartheid system. Um, in particularly to protest against the law that required black uh, South Africans to carry passport wherever they go. This was a law that was put in place among many other law that ensured that there is segregation and discrimination purely based on race. So women came together and said, you know, enough is enough. We're going to actively participate and demonstrate that we are not happy about all these laws that are put in place to ensure that a black person does not thrive, to ensure that the black person is oppressed. And 29 years later, we are enjoying the democracy that women had or women had taken an active role to ensure that we enjoy. There is a still a long way for us to go as a country, but I think it's very important for us to take a moment and pause and reflect and appreciate that the fact that we do come a long way. Although we come a long way in terms of us um, getting the freedom or, um, and us actually enjoying the freedom that we have now because uh, we are now free to move as you please. We are now free to enjoy um, dignified human rights and we are free to send our kids to any school of our choice and we are free to participate in social and economic um, activities. Although we have all those freedom or elements of freedom that I just mentioned, I do believe that there's still a long way for us to go in order for us to attain financial um, freedom. Particularly as women of this country, there is quite a long way for us to go as a country in order to ensure that women of this country have the financial freedom that they deserve. In this video, I would like to unpack some of the financial lies and stereotypes and socializations that are really keeping us as women in financial bondage and preventing us from enjoying a stable and a thriving um, financial well-being. So I would like to unpack some of those lies and discuss why I believe that some of those uh, stereotypes are lies that we should protest against and that we should actively make sure that we basically counter those lies in order for us to enjoy financial freedom that we deserve. The first lie that I would like um, to, 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 to unpack a little is a lie that says that women are not good with money because they're impulsive with their money. This is a lie because firstly, it reduces women to irrational, emotional being that just make decisions. Being an impulsive buyer is not a matter of gender. It's a matter of psychology, uh, of a person's psychology, independent of whether the person is male or female. And that psychology is influenced by their background, by their life experiences and by their worldview. So what shapes a person to be an impulsive um, buyer or impulsive with their money has nothing to do with their gender, but everything to do with the psychology of money and money personality that they have that is influenced by their background, by their um, life experiences and by their worldview. The second lie that we have been told as women is that women are risk averse. They don't inverse because they don't like to take risk. This is a lie because uh, women do not um, invest because research does reveal that uh, more men invest in comparison to women. But the reason why they, there's less women who are participating in the investment well, it's not because generally speaking, women are risk averse. It is because women have not 
being equipped with the right financial education in order for them to be able to want to take those risks, in order for them to be able to understand the world of investment. And majority of the cultures, consciously and subconsciously, um, the society pushes for men to be financially liberated. It advocates for men to get the financial education and to build their wealth. And for women, what is pushed and what is encouraged is for a woman to get the bare minimum education and for them to then just wait for marriage and raise kids. And that is why it seems as though women are more risk averse compared to men. Uh, but the reason is not just because they're women, it's because they have not been capacitated with the right information to assist them to make and inform financial decisions such as investing their money. So the fact that they are women uh, does not necessarily equate that they are risk adverse. With the right financial education, with the right training, I believe that women will be willing and will participate in the investment world. The third lie that we have been told and that we sometimes believe as women is that a financially independent woman or a successful independent woman repels potential life partners. Oh, this this is this 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 lie has made a number of women to really not realize their full potential and to cap um their what how they achieve and how they desire to climb the corporate ladder or the business uh, world with the fear um, or because of the fear that if they climb the ladder and they really succeed, they might struggle to find a potential partner. I think this is a lie that it's very important for us to debunk and um, that is very important for us as women to ensure that we do not believe. Um, go for your dreams, achieve what you want to achieve. Don't basically cap what you can achieve purely because you're afraid that you might not get a life partner. Firstly, I don't believe that we all would get married. I don't believe that all women want to get married. And so capping and um, not achieving what you want to achieve purely because you're afraid that you're not going to get a life partner is not a wise decision. And also, I believe that um, there are guys out there um, who are basically secure in who they are, secure in what they bring to the table and secure in their potential such that they're not threatened by a woman's success. So strive and make sure that you achieve whatever you want to achieve and believe that there is a life partner that you are going to meet who's going to be so secure in who they are, who's going to be so secure in what they bring to the table such that they will not be threatened by what you um, bring to your table and your success. So don't believe that lie. Go for whatever you want to go for as a woman. And the last lie that I think we tell ourselves even as women and sometimes jokingly so, but I think it's a lie that we really need to put a stop to. It's a lie that you need a rich husband or a rich man. You know how people would jokingly say that, oh, I don't want to work. I just need to get a rich husband. I just want to be a rich housewife. Um, I was actually having a discussion with my younger sister when she was saying, oh, school is so hard. Can I just be a rich housewife? I was saying, you know what? This is a lie that we need to stop telling ourselves. Um, this lie is very dangerous because firstly, it suggests that it's only man who can get um, financial wealth and we as women need to be pure recipients of whatever hard work or smart work that man has done in order for them to get financial wealth. And secondly, this lie acknowledges that in order for you to have financial wealth and to have a financial well-balanced life, you need to work hard and you need to work smart. But this lie is has an element of being selfish in that we as women then believe that Men must work and we mustn't do anything. We must just be pure recipient of that. And I think this is also dangerous because although people don't say uh, or might not acknowledge that sometimes they get into a relationship for um, financial gains, um, even if your partner is not like rich, rich, but sometimes 
women get into a relationship where they do not have a financial voice. They are in relationships where they do not have a financial backbone, such that some of them stay in abusive relationships, stay in an oppressive relationship, relationships that do not serve them, that are actually taking away from them then um, them enjoying the relationship just because of the financial gain that they get from um, that relationship. And I also think that this lie of saying, you know, you need a rich husband or a rich partner um, as a woman in order for you to thrive or to enjoy a good life. I think it's particularly um, a lie and dangerous because it then devalues the role and the contribution that a woman can bring if they are willing and able to make a meaningful financial contribution. So I think it's a lie to say that in order for you to have a good life, to live a soft life, you need a, right, a rich husband or a rich partner. And we need to stop telling ourselves this lie. So now that we have talked about these lies, and I really believe that these are stereotypes and these are the lies that are really keeping us in bondage as women. And some of these lies, they are there at the back of our mind. We are sometimes not cautious that we are subject to these lies and that they influence the way that we look at ourselves and they influence the decisions um, that we make um, about our money. So what can we do as women to ensure that we take an active role and make sure that we are active in ensuring that we are financially liberated. There's a couple of things that I believe that we can do as women. Firstly, I think we need to ensure that we take an active role to ensure that we are financially educated. There is so much information available on the internet. We live in a digital age. There are so many platforms, and some of those platforms are purely dedicated to women, to capacitate women with financial education and knowledge. And we need to ensure that we make use of those platforms and that we consume those resources in order for us to increase our financial IQs. There is a number of women who are doing great work and have great um, financial initiative. Um, and some of those women I follow myself, um, for example, Nicolette Mashile, she has very good content. And by watching her content, you can learn so much about finances. Mabalo Marco, um, Maya Fisher French, um, uh, uh, Susie Oman, um, and there are so many other ladies. I'm one of those ladies. I mean, I give out financial education. And if you basically invest in ensuring that you have the right financial education, it will assist you to walk or to make your way toward financial freedom. I think the second thing that we need to do as women is that after we have received the knowledge, we need to do something about it. Financial well-being is 80% behavior and 20% knowledge. We can learn all we want. We can, there could be thousands and thousands of platforms out there to assist us as women to gain the necessary financial education. But if we do not put those into practice, then it will be as good as nothing. So as a woman, you know that you need to do budget. You know that you need to save. You know that you need to start save, uh, investing. Are you actually doing that? I think it's time for you to take some time and reflect. Are you actually putting in practice what you have learned over the years? So the power of financial education is in you putting it into practice. Saving is a habit. Saving is a muscle that you need to exercise. You need to start now. Independent of your financial status, independent of how much money you earn or how your business is doing, you need to ensure that you are financially educated and that whatever education that you have received, that you basically put it into practice. And I think the third thing that we can do as women is to remember that no one is coming to save us. No one is coming to save you in order for you to have financial freedom, in order for you to have a, fun, a stable financial life, you need to save yourself. You need to work hard. You need to work smart. You need to ensure that you develop yourself in order to, for you to increase your income earning potential and ability. No one is coming to save you. If someone comes in your life, if a life partner comes into your life, let that person add into your life. May you, may you be able to have a financial backbone so that you are able to make 
your own decision so that you are not subjected and oppressed just because you do not have a financial book backbone so remember no one is coming to save you you need to work for yourself and i think the last thing that we can do as women to ensure that we are liberated and that we liberate one another is that we need to share information if there's a job opportunity that you know of share with another lady if there's um a financial trick or hack that you have learned share with your chummies i think research um, has revealed that as women and people in general, we're comfortable talking about our relationship. We're even comfortable about talking about our own dead, our own dead. Um, but we're very not comfortable with talking about money. I think we need to normalize, especially as ladies, talk about money. If you have a life policy, share. Where, where, where have you taken your life policy? What investment do you have in place? Let's equip one another. So let's share information. And with that, helping each other, I think it's very important that if you are in a position and you realize that there is a woman who is financially oppressed, um, and who does not have a voice because they do not have the financial muscle or they are discriminated purely based on their financial well-being. I think we need to speak up for one another. We need to stand, to stand for one another and we need also to call one another out when we start believing all these lies, all these financial lies and stereotypes that are keeping us in bondage. I think if we can do some of those things, it, it will be us demonstrating that we are taking an active role um, in ensuring that we are liberated. Similar to how the women of 1956 marched to protest against some of the laws that were put in place, we need to make sure that we make the metal march that we come together as, as ladies to ensure that we are all financially liberated, to ensure that we are empowered with the right financial education and that we are putting that education in practice in order for us to enjoy a thriving financial life. If you educate a woman, if you capacitate a woman, if you empower a woman, you are empowering a nation. Because a woman does not keep information to herself. Whatever a woman knows, however a woman behaves, influences the society, influences kids, influences the greater community. This brings us to the end of our video today. If you like this video, please leave it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell us what are the, some of the things that you think are really holding us in financial bondage as women and what can we do um, to ensure that we get the financial liberty that we deserve as women. So let's engage in the comment section. Also, you can share this video with other women, with other people. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please, please subscribe to my channel. It is free. Click that red subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Lastly, tell your friends to tell their friends that Nuggets for Your Wallet is on YouTube. Until next time. Bye.